you here in Washington, D.C. Naturally, we um, are pr- happy to associate ourselves with the campaign. Free Andre Stenin, Ria Novosti reporter held uh, by fascist forces, presumably in Ukraine. Uh, free Andrew, free our guys, uh, save our guys, I guess. Uh, any of those uh, tags there on uh, on Twitter will uh, keep the pressure up on Pornoshenko. We call him Pornoshenko because his policies are obscene. Right? Genocide is obscene, and that's Pornoshenko. Now let's uh, lift and shift into the... Um, Syria, Iraq, ISIS complex. Now here, uh, this is obviously uh, escalating, and we have this um, monstrous piece of uh, murderous theater, because that's all you can call it, a, a, a publicity stunt of the most gruesome and macabre type, the public killing of uh, James Foley, uh, and that being used to escalate the war and to raise calls for bombing into Syria, where the people making those calls for bombing Syria are not specifying whether they mean bomb Assad and therefore help ISIS or bomb ISIS and, uh, and then uh, leave Assad alone and presumably maybe uh, diminish the, uh, the uh, ISIS threat. Leading edge of this is Dempsey. Now, Dempsey, of course, is Obama's hand-picked general, and he has been playing along with Obama. Um, in particular, he did that last year at the time of the fake uh, hokum of the, the Syrian chemical attack, right, disproved by not one but two articles by the uh, semi-respectable uh, by now uh, Seymour Hersh. London Review of Books. But now we have uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Martin Dempsey, talking to a congressional committee on Thursday, and he says, quote, this is an organization, ISIS, that has an apocalyptic, end-of-days strategic vision that will eventually have to be defeated. Can they be defeated without addressing that part of the organization that resides in Syria? Question mark. The answer is no. So Dempsey and Hegel were there. They don't announce any attacks into Syria, uh, but there's already been one. We'll get to that in a, in a second. Um, let me also point out that on the same day, Ben Rhodes, the Assad hater, one of the Assad haters in the White House, you remember little Ben Rhodes tried to organize the combined decapitation and television coup Uh, of July 2012, right, when the Syrian state apparatus proved more powerful than Ben Rhodes in his fake television broadcast. Well, this obvious Assad hater, Ben Rhodes, says there were no geographic limits or boundaries to our determination to defend U.S. national interest. In other words, we could bomb Syria. Hell, we could go into Iran uh, this is all madness now. Um, so this has this is exactly what we warned against, right? That this would be an attempt to go uh, beyond just uh, clobbering uh, ISIS in northern Iraq. We repeat, as we've always said, ISIS is a creation of NATO. It was uh, trained in NATO camps in Jordan by British, French, and um, U.S. officers. It's supported by money from Saudi Arabia, from uh, Prince Abdel Rahman Faisal, brother of the foreign minister, Prince Saud Al Faisal, brother also of the uh, former ambassador to Washington, Prince Turkey Al Faisal. So that's what it is. It's the ultimate CIA secret army. That explains some of the glowing propaganda. Oh, they're so sophisticated. Oh, they're supermen. Who's going to stop them? Oh, my gosh. Um, well, um, Obama has made a couple of speeches about this now. Uh, interestingly, the Republicans all demand more. They say whatever Obama does in the way of war making, it's not enough. McCain is the most vocal. We're going to get him in a minute. But uh, and he calls for a whole list of specific insane uh, measures. 
what you're seeing, and don't forget it, the Republican Party is incurably a party of warmongers. Don't tell me about libertarians. They're warmongers because the people running the State Department and all those other agencies will be neocons. They would have been neocons with Romney. They are neocons. And they will be neocons if a Republican ever gets in the White House. There will be guaranteed war. Of course, Hillary also grave danger in that direction. Time to build an alternative now, like with our candidates that we support, the Tax Wall Street Party and the United Front against uh, austerity. Um, but now, uh, given all this, uh, what else do we know? Uh, the U.S. did <laughs> attack into Syria. It's already happened. Washington Post of yesterday, Thursday, August 21st, U.S. conducted failed rescue mission in Syria. And this was to attempt to free James Foley, this guy Sotloff, um, Sotloff and some others, uh, Joel, Stephen Joel Sotloff and uh, other uh, U.S. and Western Reporters held hostage there. So there was a firefight. They didn't find the uh, hostages. And it turned out the Washington Post had learned of the event and uh, was going to publish something. And then the uh, Obama administration held an official by, and a briefing by two uh, poobahs of the White House. Um, now, here's the... Uh, the question, Foley was 40 years old, kidnapped in November 2012. Let me just point out, he works for this thing called Global Post, led by this character, Balboni. Uh, this entire thing reeks, it fairly reeks of the intelligence community. This is fishy in the extreme. And uh, Foley, of course, uh, had been an anti gaddafi uh, propaganda uh, reporter. He was arrested by Gaddafi forces in Libya in uh, the spring of 2011. He was pre he was arrested at Brega in April 2011, held by Libyan uh, police for 44 days. But then he got out, and he was in time to be present at Gaddafi's murder, October 2011. He was there when Gaddafi was killed. Who lives by the sword may well. Die by the sword, karma, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he then transferred himself to Syria, where he was working the rebel side. Not the Assad side, but the rebel side. Let's get that straight. Um, then uh, we have to deal with this accusation that he was held by Assad forces. We'll be back in one minute on the World Crisis so, Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. So uh, we're looking at this um, raid staged by the U.S. into Syria that would have been uh, around uh, the July 4th, uh, give or take, uh, time frame. What's striking about this is that there was no coordination mentioned with the Syrian government. What's wrong here? The Syrian government has every reason to wipe out these ISIS terrorists why mount a raid uh when you could uh, presumably um coordinate it right what what the hell are we talking about here what are they going to do tip off the isis so they can run away and then go and kill more syrian army people ridiculous were they looking for a clash right you go into a country like this even with these uh, supermen of Delta Force and the SEAL commands, the, the supermen calling themselves the Night Stalkers and their stealth helicopters and all the rest of this claptrap, uh, you might have a clash. You might start killing Syrian soldiers by mistake. Is that what they were looking for? This kind of crap, amateur night, has to end. You've got a government there that's happy, eager to attack ISIS, to wipe out these terrorist rebels. Drop the hostility, drop this vendetta against Assad, carry, swallow your pride or resign, go back to the skull and bones vault uh, and stop doing this stuff. Now, as far as James uh, Foley is concerned, my guess is this. He was uh, pro-rebel. He was pro-terrorist rebel in 
Libya participating or present at least at the killing of Gaddafi. Then he switched over along with the flow. He went with the flow of jihadis and weapons, perhaps from Benghazi, right? Perhaps under the auspices of uh, Ambassador Stevens and the Benghazi mission, whatever that was. Uh, then ended up in Syria with the rebels. And we'll talk about this. However, uh, the FBI says an organized gang captured him in November 2012. Now, just before that, and this is my suspicious point, um, James had uh, f- uh, filed, Foley, James Foley had filed a story saying, oh, people in Aleppo are really fed up with these rebels. Man, these these rebels are really unpopular in Aleppo. People are sick of war. They're sick of their administration. They're sick of their uh, oppression and all this other stuff. Was that the thing that got him bumped off? Did the controllers of this entire thing say, well, uh, James Foley, you've gone off the reservation. We're going to find some other way to use you, and you're not going to like it. And here it went. This character, Balboni, of the uh, – the, uh, uh, this uh, global um, global uh, post, uh, also very suspicious character, reeks of the intelligence community. So um, we've got that entire uh, mystery. Now, just in terms of uh, how they, they play this in the, uh, the Washington Post of today, he was held in eastern Syria with a dozen other captives, including Western journalists, the captors are British members of the Islamic State. Last week sent his family and empl- employer an email threatening to kill him. Hmm. Um, are these people freelancers or are they from MI6? Is this a this convenient, horrendous video? Is that something that uh, somebody in the London oligarchy wanted to see to get the U.S. into war once again? And um, here we go. It, it's it's clear here. Um, Balboni now says we knew exactly where he was from the released hostages. We knew that his immediate jailers were British jihadists. The guy who killed him allegedly, Jihad John. Right? We've had Jihad Jane some years ago. Now we have Jihad John from the British side. However, this is an interesting paragraph in the Washington Post of uh, yesterday morning. For the first year of his captivity, Global Post and Foley's family were sure that he was being held by the Syrian government, according to articles on the website at the time. But last fall, they announced that they no longer believed that to be the case and said that they would make no further comments on his situation. Well, they never had any proof. There was no proof. This was simply a bald assertion trying to pin this on Assad. And what's the... uh, What's the percentage for Assad in that? What is he supposed to uh, gain? Now, in terms of the British, um, you want to get the background. 9-11 synthetic terror made in USA. Any edition. I'm looking at the fifth edition. Turn to page 175, Al-Qaeda and so forth. Al-Qaeda and Londonistan. And uh, Londonistan, here's the the take from the uh, London Daily Telegraph, November 20th, 1999. Britain is now an international center for Islamic militancy on a huge scale, and the capital, London, is home to a bewildering variety of radical Islamic movements, many of which make no secret of their commitment to violence and terrorism to achieve their goals. We've also got Putin saying in 2001... In London, there is a recruitment station for people who want to go and join the combat in Chechnya. And the following countries between 1995 and 1999, again, it's all in 9-11 synthetic terror made in USA, any edition. uh, The following countries protested the harboring of terrorists by the British, Israel, Algeria, Turkey, Libya, Yemen, India, Egypt, France, Peru, Germany, Nigeria, Russia, and uh most dramatic, Gaddafi on Al Jazeera after 9-11. Gaddafi says to Al Jazeera, I'm puzzled if America were serious about eliminating terrorism, the first capital the U.S. should rock with cruise missiles is London. London, the British woman interviewer scandalized. 
He says, London, it's the center of terrorism. It gives safe housing to the terrorists. As long as you don't bomb London, you're not serious. You're using a double standard. London has more terrorists than Kabul. You get the picture. 9-11 synthetic terror made in USA. Uh, best uh, orientation uh, in these matters by far. So now we've also got to look at this uh, very interesting work from our friend Thierry Maison of the uh, uh, Voltaire uh, Network. Let's go and find uh, that one if we can. Um, it's essentially the story of John McCain cavorting with terrorists. I've sent out a, a Twitter about this right here. It's the afternoon of uh, the 22nd of August. John McCain, conductor of the Arab Spring and the Caliph. So behind ISIS is who? Well, significantly, McCain, especially his trip to Syria, April 2013, set up by pro-terrorist ambassador Ford. Here he is in Syria cavorting. You'll remember he was cavorting with the guy who was uh, later exposed as a cannibal, eating a human heart. But then we have a very interesting picture, a very serious meeting, pro-democracy forces, John McCain meeting the heads of the Free Syrian Army. So at this point, they're all calling themselves Free Syrian Army, including the cannibal. In the left foreground, Ibrahim al-Badri. Now, al-Badri is none other than Baghdadi. He's the caliph. So McCain was cavorting in the same room with the caliph and Salim Idris, the former head of the military uh, uh, Free Syrian Army Council. Right? They're all there. So the idea is, as, as Maison absolutely correctly points out, one day they can be Free Syrian Army when they've got to meet McCain and try to get money and weapons and political support. The next day they can be al-Nusra. Why not? And then the next day they can become ISIS. And it turns out that this character, Baghdadi, the one we now know as Baghdadi, Badri, had already founded ISIS when he came into the room with McCain. So take a look at that. That's on Voltaire Network. John McCain, conductor of the Arab Spring. Get the link on top of uh, my uh, Twitter. Welcome back to the World ISIS Radio. Webster Tarpe here in Washington, D.C. So the ISIS still have this Joel Sutloff, and they say they're going to kill him. Uh, do not be stampeded. Um, and remember, the real way to put an end to this is an ultimatum directed especially to Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, Oman, the entire Gulf Cooperation Council, saying stop supporting ISIS, stop the arms, stop the financial support coming from those governments and citizens of those countries. Crack down because it's the Saudis who uh, or Qatar and or and it undoubtedly varies right different groups but uh this has got to end that is more important than the military side it's more important than the government in uh baghdad so uh there we have it